It's really a pleasure having you and uh, having nice. an interview for our course on materials characterization yeah. at okay. UPB. So, first question, very quickly. The discovery of C60, later baptized as you, by you as Bucky Bolt, is based on your work on molecular spectroscopy. How do you think that material characterization techniques should be considered for the new materials science education? I think it's uh, important to realize that uh, the standard uh, uh, sciences, chemistry, physics, uh, engineering, um, biology uh, of a hundred years ago, those were the, the subjects, really the boundaries have broadened and now one could say that uh, condensed matter physics, uh, synthetic chemistry, um, molecular biology, materials engineering are now almost one subject mm -hmm. in the sense that you can say m m modern materials could be, will require an understanding of almost all these subjects. And that means that we need to th rethink our education and certainly when it comes to research in materials you will need a cross-disciplinary approach and have people who have an understanding of condensed matter physics. You'll need uh, people who really are chemists who really understand the interaction of atoms, uh, hydrogen uh, interactions, uh, weak interactions of under vast forces, who understand the electronic properties of molecules, spectroscopy, because that's going to be interesting and important for molecular electronics. Uh, molecular biology, assembly, bottom-up assembly, and we, for instance, the brain is a very complex, maybe a computer type object, but it's been built by bottom-up assembly. Uh, engineering, materials engineers, are, are really people who need to make it happen, the technology, and to assemble these devices into useful um, uh, sort of major uh, computers and stuff like that. So modern science is incredibly exciting but very broad and I think we need to recognize that. I think we still have to be specialists in one or other area because it's such a hard thing to do. But we need to work together with people and really they have to trust the expertise of, of other people. And I, I think this is a problem because the universities are rather locked into these traditional departments, I mean, physically in the buildings. I mean, there are materials, science and engineering, but now the new term nanotechnology, I like to call it nanoscience and nanotechnology, N and N, because the science, the nanoscience is the fundamental part of it, the nanotechnology is the application of it. And I like to marry these two together because that's the way it is. But it's not really new. I mean, it's there are many different definitions. One could be, um, atom by atom, molecule by molecule, assembly of a complex system. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do. And if we think about the modern technology of the computer, it's top down. We create a piece of silicon and we make it and then we cut it up into smaller and smaller pieces. The question is, can you make a computer by bottom up assembly? Well, this has been created by protein by protein assembly on the basis of a d DNA blueprint. So we know it can be done. The challenge is, can we? do this. Well, it may be one day we shall. It's a long way off. And if you recognize this, then you say, okay, we need to learn something from biology about uh, assembly of complex systems. We le need to learn something from about biology in the, which, in the way that our body, all these test tubes of chemi chemicals, uh, work together. To understand what's in the test tube, we need the chemistry. Mm -hmm. to understand the interactions on a very small scale. When we're talking about molecules, we need to have a chemist's understanding of the interaction, and then we need the physicist's understanding of the intricate details of the condensed matter behavior. So it's a very exciting time, but one very challenging, uh, because one person, I think, cannot I know everything. Um, and so we work now in teams and okay. we must bring all those teams together really under one roof. I think if they're still separated in the 20 years time into chemistry, physics and biology and engineering, I think we're going to have problems.